Um, continuing on pretty much with manipulating the Dom, except today is cool because it's the first time we're going to build websites. I like to think of is what we've built so far. You just look at information. You don't interact with it, but a web application, you actually, your user does some kind of interaction and changes the website. Um, so that's the first day we're going to actually have interactions and here's what we're building uh today i think today will be really challenging uh hopefully in a good way um but it's definitely going to build on on yesterday so the first one we have is toggle the box this is kind of our warm-up but we can just click on the box and uh change its background color, right? Today is also a little bit of a relief because there's no prohibition on using HTML. So use as much, you're encouraged to use as much HTML as possible you, you, uh, to build the structure of the website. You, you'll be forced, you, you can't do these interactions just with HTML, you'll have to use JavaScript, but there's gonna be a good combination of using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So that whole day one gimmick of you're not allowed to touch the HTML is gone. Um, this one is going to be uh, a big step up, this mirror. So you're going to have an input box here and just uh, show whatever the user's typing right below it. Um, then we have counter. Kind of self-explanatory, right? This one's kind of fun, race. I didn't um, give a goal, but you can if you want. I did left and right. You could probably do up and down too if you want. So these are all user interactions, right? Your users uh, clicking the right arrow in my, on my keyboard. I'm clicking the left arrow and the HTML is changing, right? And then finally, the stopwatch. This will be the, maybe the most difficult. I'm not sure. Uh, but we can press start. And we can stop our stopwatch. And we can clear it. So you have your work cut out for you today, for sure. Uh, some of these feel like, counter and stopwatch feel like they could almost be like projects. So... Do what you can do. Don't don't be overwhelmed. Um, yeah. Any questions right off the bat? We're obviously going to have lecture and explore what you need fundamentally to build all this stuff. But Okay. So let's get into uh, lecture. So... Um, Let's take a look at Google, Google, right? Uh, I guess we could look at Google or we could look at other sites too. But the whole idea of this week is we want to be able to make user interactions. What are those user interactions again? What are some of the most common ones? Uh, Victor, what are some, like on this page, what is a possible user interaction? Uh, search feature. Yeah, like, but here we actually call this like an input box. It looks good, but this is just an input box. So this is going to be very similar to our mirror. But then if I type something and I click here, oh, you can't actually click on Google, I guess. Um, well, I'd press enter, right, to, to search. Um, so if we go to Amazon... Another really common, I think one of our most common interactions that I'm doing right now and right now is just clicking, right? A user clicking. Uh, so I think we'll actually start there with that interaction. Um, some of the most common interactions, typing 
into a, a search or an input box. Uh, clicking. So those are our most common, right? So we'll start there. So go ahead and boot up this uh, website. I have a blank website. And right now, I just want a button that says click me. That's all I want. So no uh, prohibition on using HTML. Let's go ahead and use that. But how can I get a button on the screen that says click me, uh, Alexander? Uh, button element. Yeah. Click me. Yep. Okay. Um, for the next objective, though, when I click this button, I want to see a message in my console that says click. So let's brainstorm how we could possibly do that. So what are the steps we're going to need to do that? On click in the bottom. We could do that. That's true. Um, but we're not going to do it that style. Right. Okay. Yeah. Function. Yeah, we're going to do it put, from the JavaScript. Put ID and then like go to do in JavaScript. Sure, what should our ID be? Click me. Okay. And then uh, what's this, the first step we need to do? Create a function. Did you say make a function? Yeah, create a function, like okay. call click. Target the button. Yeah, okay. So let's target the button. How can we find the button? Document dot get element by ID. Yeah. Um, actually, let me do the JavaScript on top. Document dot. Uh, we're not going to use get element by ID. I prefer query selector. Yep. So how would I, what would be the argument for query selector to find the button right here with the ID of click me? Hashtag click dash me. Yep. And I want to save this into a variable so I can reference it easily. Uh, what's a good name for our variable, Aaron? Doesn't matter too much. What's a good name for our variable here? Click me. Sure. Um, so we found the element that we want to listen for an event. How do we wire it up now to fire a certain function when this button element is clicked on? Uh, okay. Ronald? Um, yeah, so we're going to need to add an event handler, a uh, click event handler. Okay. So I guess reference, uh, type click me and then, um, dot, and then, uh, you can access the, uh, add event listener, um, method. Yeah. And, and what are the two the, arguments? What are the two, what are the data types of the two arguments that this method takes? Me, uh, a string. Yeah. Um, the first one's a first string. Argument. So that's, and yeah. that's the type of event. And here, yeah. the type of event we want to listen to is a, is a click. Mm -hmm. And what's the data type it's of the second? It's a, it's a function. Yeah. Um, it's a event handler function. And now I'm realizing that 
I uh, wanted to hit another topic before coming here, and you'll see why in a second. So let's totally shift gears and talk about um, functions. All the different types. Mm. So I want a function that inputs two numbers and returns their <laughs> sum. This is so boring. I'm sorry, but I, I don't know. It's the easiest way to, to show this concept. Let's start there. So, um, Sydney, help me stub this function out that inputs two numbers and returns their sum. Function sum with the parentheses for the parameters num1, num2. Curly brackets or braces. braces yep. Return num1 plus num2. Okay, so this is the beautiful way, a uh, traditional way we write functions called function declarations. The confuse, uh, to me, what I found confusing when first learning JavaScript is that there's another way you can write functions uh, called an arrow function. So how can we rewrite this function um, using an arrow function? And I know we haven't covered this, so open to the class. Can anyone take a guess? Call sum. One more time. What was that? Call, su call sum. Const sum. Uh, I'll let us see, I think. What? And see. It's going to be equals. E equal parentheses, I think. Parentheses, P yep. And uh, arrow, fu arrow function. Yeah, we call this a fat arrow. And num1 plus num2. Yeah, so our parameters go here. And num1 plus num2 there. Yeah, um, but that's the, the shortened version. So first, let's just do return num1 plus num2. So these two, for our purposes right now, there's exceptions, are identical, okay? That's the mental model I want you to have right now. Um, this one is technically a function expression. Uh, so there's a, a, another important way we can write an arrow function, um, but shortened. And can anyone take a guess at that? If we're directly returning something, what are we able to do? How can we uh, shorten this arrow function? You just remove the curly brackets and then remove the return. Yes. So if we're directly returning something without doing like console.log or let x equals five or whatever, we get rid of the curly braces and the word return. And those are implied. So these are kind of some of our major ways we can write a function. I'm showing you this now because traditionally when we have callback functions, we'll use arrow functions. So here, this second argument, it wants an anonymous arrow function, traditionally. It doesn't want, but other developers will most commonly use this syntax. I like to stress this, though, because I remember how confusing this was to me, seeing this as an argument. So this is just a, like a blank function right now that we're feeding into a method. A method is just another word for a function with, with a, a caveat that we'll explore later. What questions are there on the different ways we can write a function? Um, Max, does that mean a function is in essence actually just a variable with stored code in it? 
Yes. Yeah, behind the scenes. I think I think everything in JavaScript is really behind the scenes like an object, but um, it's getting really in the weeds. But functions, we, we consider higher order functions in JavaScript because I think the expression is they're like first class citizens, meaning they can be stored in variables. So I, I didn't show you this, but this is a function expression, a, a little, kind of a little less common. This is another way we can write a function. But maybe a little less common than the other three. All that to be said, I wanted to show you this because this is what we traditionally use in a callback function. A callback function is a normal function that gets called later, not by us, by, in this case, by the browser. Because this function will be invoked when there's a click. So switching gears back to our objective, when we click, click me, we want to see a console.log message that says, click me. How can I finish this thought, uh, Ryan? Um, right, console.log. Yeah. Click me. In. So now we basically wired up this element to listen for a click event. And when it hears that event, it fires our callback function that we defined. We can have it do whatever we want, but right now we're telling it to just met, uh, log a message, say, click me. Someone think of something way more fun to do. We have the power to do anything we want in the world. Someone think of something silly or stupid to do instead of saying, click me. Can you make Maybe. that thing rotate 360? <laughs> Uh, well, you, you, you tell me how I can do that. <laughs> no, I'm not really too it either. I think it's like some kind of like translator transform, but I'm not too sure I have to look it up. I don't know. I, nothing comes to, to my mind how to reverse it. I think we can do, oh, okay. I think we can do like a hover though, right? And we kind of hover over it, at least like transform or translate X or something like that. Sure. You should push it over. Sure. I don't know about that. So the idea okay. is to like move it. Maybe let's move it somewhere random when we click it, right? So how yes. do, so we wanna we wanna move it somewhere random. It's like a troll site. They try to click it and then it's like moves away from them. Um any ideas how we could probably possibly do that? Could you set the the margins or something? Sure, we can try. What what's your idea? Um, basically, math dot random inside. I, I'm I'm not sure actually, Max. Well, let's just say we want to move it to the right fifty pixels. How can I set a margin of fifty pixels? On click me. Click me the sty dot margin. There we go. Right. Whoops. Uh, did I spell this wrong? Click me dot style dot margin. Why isn't this doing my auto suggest? Let's do a hundred. Make it really obvious. I think I might have a bug though. I'm not sure. Yeah, something's off. Can I not reference click me from click me? Did you comment something out earlier? Uh, we're grabbing... Margin right's not working because I tried it. But what if I do margin, <laughs> it works fine. 
Oh, just normal margin? Oh, okay. Why isn't margin right work? Uh, oh, because it was margin light. Yeah, okay. Sorry. So there we go. But instead of 100 pixels to the left, we want it somewhere random. How can we get it somewhere random? Ryan had was, was making the sounds that were in the right direction. This is not entirely related to margins, but I remember seeing somebody like using maybe like coordinates on the page. Yeah. And then moving. Yeah, but that might be a little harder because then we have to change the okay. positioning and stuff. Let's do it. Let's just do a random margin for fun. Or actually make it really easy. Let's just do a random margin entirely. And then it'll move maybe everywhere on the page. So I want a random number between a hundred and or one and a thousand. That'd be good, right? How can I get a random number? You guys had a lot of practice with this. Random number between one and a thousand. So mass dot random. And then mass dot seal. So wrap it. Sure. Yeah, wrap it. Sorry. And then times a thousand. Uh -huh. Okay. But when I say click me, this is just giving a number, but we really need something that says like a hundred pixels. So what do I have to do to this random number? You have to stringify it. Yeah. And I'll force it to be a string by adding what this is what i want yes. yeah if i just add px it'll force it the first uh, data type to be a number so here we go i press click me and it goes all over the place that's kind of cool right um okay any questions on that Okay, uh, so next objective. One of the most common things, I think this is where I was headed when we started. The most com one of the most common interactions is uh, typing into an input box, right? So that's our next objective. Uh, how can I get a... Input box that a user can type into. Uh, Kevin, how can I get an input box? Input? Yeah. Um, and I want this input box. This input box has nothing to do with that button. So I want them separated far apart from each other? How can I get them kind of separated? Or actually, let's just we'll make it easier. Let's just do a horizontal line. Yeah. Just so you guys know, that they have nothing to do with each other for this lecture. Okay, so we have an input box. Very nice. The user can type in it. I want to console.log a message saying you are typing maybe like a creep. We're making like a creepy horror video game. And like as a user's typing, we're like, we're watching you right now type or whatever. So I want to see a message that says you are typing as they type. How can I go about doing that? Open to the class. You give the input an ID first. Sure. What's a good name? Um, uh, I don't know, <laughs> like input box. Okay. And then um, let him, like let him put equal document dot, or 
document uh, dot query selector and then uh, in the string hashtag uh, input box. Very nice. What comes next? How can I wire this up to listen? This is different, right? Before we listen for clicks, what kind of event are we trying to listen for now, Hara? Uh, um, the person typing. Yeah, but what into is the box? But what does JavaScript refer to that as? So, how do we attach any event listener to an element? Uh, the variable dot add event listener. Yeah. So let's start there. And the first argument is the type of event. So here I'm going to look at my options. And are these my options? These don't look like my options. No. So the IntelliSense is not. Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah. Here's all the different, I think, events. But the one we're listening for, does anyone know? It's kind of tricky. And it's going to be different in React, which makes it more tricky. Change. Yeah, I it's thought it was changed too. Keydown. I don't think it is in vanilla. Keyboard. Uh, what? Is it the keyboard or, uh, on keyboard or key down? Maybe. That one might work too, but the one I, I use just is recently it input? is input. Um, but of course, this needs to be a, a string. Uh, and then what's the data type of our second argument here that we need, uh, Renata? Callback function? Yes, yeah, so we're going to make a little anonymous arrow function. And here we said, what code do we want to run when the user is inputting into our input box, uh, Jazz? Um, so console.log, and then I'm listening. What was, what was that? <laughs> you are typing, yeah. <laughs> you are typing, yeah. <laughs> I'm listening might be creepier, though. <laughs> uh, OK, so I type. And look at that, you are typing. And now our user is scared. Um, but then let's do something weird and random. What's another thing we can do, David? Anything. What's just any way we can change the page as they type? Yeah, let's make the input box blink. Okay. Sure. Let's make the input box blink as they type. Any ideas there? Um, not really. No, I mean, I would. <laughs> I think this I might would... be more, uh, a bit off more than we can handle because we'll need to use what actually to get it to blink. At least set interval. Yeah, we're gonna need to like use like intervals and stuff. Uh, how are we doing on time? We can try, I guess. Can we uh, print it to the page? But well, printing it to the page is kind of cheating. Let's do a set interval. That's fine. So, what argument to set interval take, Zach? Um, I remember typing in the seconds. Yeah, but that's the uh, second argument. So the seconds will will just oh here it's a little weird because oh no we don't need a set interval now that I'm thinking about this I don't I don't know this is hard <laughs> can we toggle the visibility of the yeah. div on and off as we yeah type, maybe? yeah 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 that's how we have to do it yeah that's 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 very smart so let's do a toggle of i don't know we'll set it just true originally is toggle i guess and then if well, well this was daniel's idea so what's your idea daniel um maybe if is toggle um uh input dot 
style dot visibility, I think, equals hidden, and then else input dot style dot visibility equals this blocker display. I can't remember off the top of my head. That could be wrong on all this though. Visible. And then finally, what do we want to do to our toggle? I think to make this work, but we can. Yeah. What do we want to do to our toggle? Toggle equals false. Is toggle, equal, you, is toggle, toggle equals, equals false. This became very interesting, actually. <laughs> this, this is tricky. What do you guys think? How can we switch the Boolean of toggle? We learned an operator specifically for this. That's an equal. Yeah, well, like bang the toggle. Point. And that'll flip it. Uh, we're using is toggle, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, like yeah, the... yeah. My bad. Okay, and with all that, every time we type, this should fire. Oh, but then what is our bug, right? <laughs> mm, we can no longer type, yeah. type on it. Yeah, that's... Maybe change the border color. Yeah. Uh, border 10 pixels, solid black border zero pixels. How about that? Yeah, that's cool. Kind of. I don't know if that's blinking, but good enough. That was fun. Uh, any questions on that one? Okay. Uh, oh, wait, I, I, yeah. I've got a question. So when you have a callback function as the argument, is it better to define the function um, in the argument like you're doing here or create a whole separate block, make a function there, and then pass in the name of the variable as the callback? Yeah, so what David is saying is this is considered inline the way we have it now with an anonymous function or we could basically do uh, const our callback function equals all this. And then name it here. And the question is, well, what is better, right? Um, I think if it's pretty short, you can you just do it in line. To me, it makes sense. If it becomes in React, when it becomes we're like we're asking the server to do things, and then you you uh, define it outside like this, so not in line. So it'll depend. You'll see both. So you'll definitely need to learn both. Good question, though. But like, I think also, yeah. Um, that is, if you want to actually remove an event listener, I think you actually do need, um, you can't just pass it in as a arrow function. I think you need the reference to the actual like callback function that you passed in. And the only way to do that is by creating it outside. So you have that variable oh. reference when you yeah. do event listener. Yeah. Okay. I think that so Ronald is saying if in our application, we don't, for some reason, we don't want it to listen for this event anymore. Um, I'm rusty on this. It's been a while. Do we, is there a remove event listener? I think it's removed. Yeah. And then exactly. the same click type. And then you have to, right. basically you have to pass in that function. And the only way to do it is if you have a reference to that exact function. Okay, so this should work one time and then not work again. No, so something's off with removing oh. it. Oh, you have a input and then you have click. Oh, sorry. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
I don't know why this doesn't come off more often. I feel like I'm never removing events. I'm only attaching them, but there's definitely a use case for removing, but not today. So, so how would you get around that? Can you and line 43 set a variable to that and then remove that variable as an argument in, in line? Right. Like in line no, 43. No. No, if you if you do it in line, oh no, that's not true. You you uh, you can do a non-anonymous function in line, but then the question would be kind of why if you're naming it. Then I think that would just look ugly and, and really unusual. But you you could, I guess. Uh, I don't think you could do a function expression in line, so you would have to do a function declaration like this. This is pretty unusual though, unless you're watching Kyle Simpson. Um, so we're not gonna do that today. Yeah. No, I mean like in line 43, could you do, you know, like call that const event listener equal to, and then, you know, what you have there already input that at, add event listener. No, you can't write a declaration. This is an argument. So we can't be like, this will be an error. We can't write a declaration here. It, it, it needs a value. Uh, right. But the whole, the entire line, not just that argument, <clears throat> the whole line 43 set that to a variable. And then can we just say remove? Oh, like what is this return you're saying? Kind of like this, the, a uh, set interval. Um, sorry. So this doesn't return anything, this method. It would, that would be nice if it functioned the same way and then we could just clear it, but it doesn't. A anyway, this is more advanced than I was planning. You you're not going to have to remove any event listener that you attach in, in the entire course actually. Although it is interesting. Okay, any other questions? I think we're pretty good on time actually. So if you do have questions. Just the code, <laughs> thanks. Just the code? Yeah, just in the chat after, that's okay. Oh yeah, yeah, no, every day I'm gonna put the code, yeah. Um, okay, next objective, when we, uh, are on Google and we type something in, right? We press enter and this is submitting a form. Um, but even before we get that, let's just say my next objective is I think someone has a hot mic. Uh, a few of you actually. Um, so I just want a button that says submit here. And when I click this button, I want a console.log, whatever value is in there. So whatever the user typed, I want to see in my console. So first I need a button that says submit. And then when I click submit, I want to see the value in my console that the user typed. Who can... Well, getting the button is, is pretty easy, right? Um, so Zach, how can we get the button? Um, would you need a button element and then need to put it in a flex div along with the, the search, search, um, input as well? Uh, yeah. So right now I don't care about flex or styling, but what, what should we give it so we can reference it later? Um, an ID. Yes. And what's a good name um, for this? Submit button, I don't know. Sure. Okay, now when I click on it, I want a function to fire. So what do I have to do there? What are my steps? When I click submit, how about right now we just console.log the word submitted? Uh, Monica? Um, what is it that you want us to do? When I click that button, submit, mm -hmm. 
want to see a console.log saying submit. <clears throat> Did. Um, so would you add an event listener? Yeah. So input that. Not input yet. We're not using input. Input's part of the other example. All right. Okay. Or, uh, um, no, I'm sorry. Input is part of this example, but button is what we want to fire right now. So button that. Yeah, we do want something like button, except before we say that, we have to find it. Oh, so we do the document that query selector. Yeah. Which I put in here. Um, the button. So if we put button, what is the problem with that class? We have two Sorry, different target. buttons. We have two yeah, different it's buttons. Which one the will first. give us, Ryan? Sorry. Which one will it return to us? E either or oh. no, it'll return the first, the first one. one. I think the first um, one. Yeah. So that's not what we want. So what do we what do we put in this argument? Submit button. Yeah. So one? hashtag because it's an ID. Submit button. I think I said I was going to circle back to this, why I like query selector and then never did. I like it because it's the same rules as CSS. Have you guys noticed that? It's exactly the same. So just like you would target this button in CSS to make it big or whatever. Uh, which didn't work. As the wrong ID need submit oh. at the beginning submit button okay uh, so just like you would target in in css is the same rules for what you put as the argument here which is why i really like it so this returns a reference to uh the element that we'll just call submit button And now we're in a good place to add this event listener. We want to click it and see the console.log message submitted. What do you think there, uh, Alex? What? Well, sorry, what was that? I said I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, Guillaume, what do you think? Yeah, you can um, uh, submit button dot uh, at, e at event listener. And then uh, first argument will be click. And then um, arrow function. Um, console log, console dot log, um, submit, a uh, click. Yeah, I think we said submitted, yeah. but that's fine. So. Yeah. Oh, this is still going crazy. I guess that's fine. Uh, yeah, I guess that's fine. So when I click submit, that's working. It says clicked. But my main objective, uh, saying whatever the user typed in into the input um, element. So I want to see this SDFFFFFFF instead of the console.log message. How can I do that? That's pretty tricky. Open to the class. You're going to have to target that input field. Yeah. And then we already have that. it, though, a reference to it right here. Oh, OK. So it's then a you little can check its property, I think. Yeah, so we're going to console.log what property of input not um, uh, value yeah it's at least there. i thought i don't know why it didn't uh, auto suggest and there we go so the, oh. the the browser is keeping track of the element's value as the user types and then we can make reference to it
Questions on that? This is going to be such an essential interaction, right? Getting input from your user and then doing whatever you want to do with it. There's a problem, though, with this setup so far. So if you type into any form, you can click submit or the user can do what to submit a form? Hit return. Yeah, you can hit enter, but nothing happens when I press enter. So ideally, that's not a great user interaction. I want to listen for an enter as well. But I don't want to have to type another event listener that's exactly the same. So what we can do is use a form. If we use a form to wrap our input box, we can then uh, have the user click submit or press enter. And both will fire an event. So this event listener, we're not going to use anymore. And we're going to try to use a form to do this instead. So here, I'm going to wrap my input and my button in a form element. And now I want to target this form. I need to target that form element and save it in a variable. How can I do that? How can I get a reference to that form and save it in a variable? Um, Roman? Um, can you give the form an ID? Uh, can you put your mic down or? Can you um, give the form an ID? Yeah, yeah, we absolutely can. What would you like to call it? Form. One more time? Form. Sorry. Okay. That works. And then? And then you could do let form equal document dot element or query selector hashtag ID or form. Sorry. Okay, we got the form. Now, how do we attach an event listener? This is going to be a new event listener too, but how do we do our general formula for attaching an event listener, uh, Alexander? Uh, would it be form uh, dot add event listener? Yep. So now the question is, well, what is this event called? And does anyone, you wouldn't really know this unless you just, this is just something you have to kind of memorize. But does Submit? Any, yeah. So the event type is called submit. Submit will include a click on the button or the user pressing enter. And now we do our callback function. Um, and now we can console.log that input.value. So now if the user click submit oh so now we have another complication uh back in the day there was a default behavior that was useful for forms um they would like send a request to the server automatically uh we don't build web pages the way they used to um 20 years ago or whatever it was so now we actually have some homework to do we have to pass in uh, a parameter event here um, and then use prevent default to prevent that default behavior that this form used to do automatically. This is just some homework you have to do on every form. You'll get very used to it. Um, so now we prevented that default behavior and now if I type in and click here we can see the value or if I press enter we can see the value. Questions on that?
Okay, as a final objective, let's pretend we're making like a to-do list, right? Or maybe a student list. So I want Victor and Aaron, and I want to see the names appear below my student list. How can I, let's start brainstorming that. I just want to build a list of my students. How can I add these names with this form I've created? Could you add it to an array? Uh, tomorrow, not today. Let's start with one. Use uh, unordered list or something. Yeah, let's just start with unordered list. We could definitely do. Let's start with one thing. I want to type in Aaron, click submit, and see it below. Maybe start with the HTML. That might be the easiest. How can I designate a place to put these names? You can make a P tag or a list tag or... Yeah, we'll use Alexander's idea, make an unordered list. And then, like, if we want to cheat, we could just do that, right? But I want it to come from, from here. Would it be query selector? We do have to use query selector. What um, We have to find this UL, right? Because we want to add to it. So how do we find that UL? Give it an ID. We can, yeah. It's the only one, so we don't have to, but we could give it an ID. List. Yeah. You know what? Let's, let's, let's not give it an ID so because we haven't practiced that. How can I find it without giving it an ID? Use the query selector. Whoops, I forgot. Document. And what's our argument? The element, so the list. So what do I type? Uh, UL. Yeah. And then this, what's a good name for our variable? List. Uh huh. And then I thought we actually have a little bit more homework. Or what do you, I'll turn it to you guys. What do you think? Do you have to create the allies? Yeah, we got to create one ally. How do we do that? Document dot create element ally. Mm -hmm. And then what text do we want to fill that ally with? The input value? Yeah. Uh yeah. And finally. Do you need to append child? And what argument? Hello, I. All right, let's try it, right? So, uh, Victor, I press enter, we see Victor. Um, but then, this isn't a great user experience. <clears throat> I would like that name to disappear when I'm done submitting it. How can I get that name to disappear? Is there some way you manipulate the um the input box? Yeah. Input dot value Maybe equals clear one. or something. Um uh, an empty string. Um, yep. So let's try again. Victor, I press enter, and then Aaron, and then Sydney. Yeah. There we go. Questions on this one. What exactly just changed? Uh, oh, um, if I don't have this line, when I type these names, it, it still is here in this box. 
Okay. Which is kind of a bad it. user experience because I submitted it already. So if, yeah, if I tried to like add Ronald now, it's all weird. All right, five more minutes. Any questions? Okay, I'll get the rooms going. Uh, is the day 10 work page uh, open? Uh, no, not, not yet. Let me do that right now. Okay, should be good. Thank you. Yep. All right, so what do we want here? Oh, we have an even number today? 21. Okay. Uh, okay, room should be open. 